Hello, so this is going to be a video on my Chinese gas mask collection. Now there's not loads of masks here, as you can see there's only about six, but Chinese gas masks or respirators are kind of interesting because they had their own domestic designs for a while, then they used lots of Soviet-style respirators, then they kind of did their own modified version of Soviet respirators, um, and now they're coming up with some of their own designs and also just copying other masks. So what I have here is obviously six masks, now, I'm not sure on the total chronological order of all these masks, so I basically put them bottom left to bottom right, um, and then top left to top right in sort of order. Um, and I'll go through all the masks with you. I have done other videos on these masks, so if you want more detail on an individual mask, it's probably best to watch that video. Now, the mask at the very bottom left, which I'll just cut to and zoom in on now. So, this mask, I believe, is called the M64. Now, I believe there's actually two variants of this. One, like this one, which has the exhale valve underneath and then the voice diaphragm above it. And one that has uh, basically a system that's like the mask behind it, which is the FMJ05, which we'll go back to later. But I believe there was basically two variants. One like this one where the voice diaphragm and exhale valve are separate, and another variant where the exhale valve was around the outside of the voice diaphragm, so they were combined in one area. Um, but basically, they're sort of copies of the Soviet MM1 tank crewman's mask. Um, the idea being that you've got the front forward-facing eyepieces, you've got a voice diaphragm to communicate with, and you could use either a hose or a filter directly underneath the mask. Um, it's a simple five-point five head harness on there, um, with just the elastic sort of straps you tighten. But it's not a bad mask as far as masks go. Um, that sort of surprised me, because loads of people said this mask looks really goofy. Um, it's not as I said, not a bad design at all, really. Um, the MM1 is a bit more streamlined, but this mask is actually perfectly functional. I think if you had the one with the combined voice diaphragm and XL valve, it would actually you know, be a bit more compact, because you wouldn't have that bulky bit sticking out there. But um, for what it is, it's actually an alright mask. I imagine it would work absolutely fine in a tank um, situation. The rubber it's made from is that kind of latex material all the Soviet masks are made from. It's not actually like the MM1, made from that thicker kind of less flexible material, the sort of rubber. It's actually more like a GP5's kind of rubber, but only the front part of a GP5, and then obviously kept on with straps, if that makes sense. I'm sure you know what I'm getting at, though. It's like the soft, bendy latex for the face piece, and then the back is all straps. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Now, the next mask is the Chinese M69, if I remember right. Uh, right. And this is actually a pretty competent mask. It's basically like a uh, sort of Chinese copy of the Soviet PMG this time, but actually slightly improved. The reason being that it's improved is it actually has a proper intake for a filter, not a rubber one, which means the filter weight doesn't pull the mask to the side as much, it keeps the filter a bit more rigid. Uh, up to you whether you think triangular eyepieces or round eyepieces are better, I'm probably more of a fan of round eyepieces, to be honest, but it's got a TSO tube system for the eyepieces, so it means that it doesn't fog up. Um, there's also a Tissot tube system on that other mask on the left, um, the M64, so that works fine. Um, it's got a voice diaphragm, as you can see that grate there, and just underneath that voice diaphragm is the, the exhale valve. So it's just a very competent Soviet-style mask, really, just with a few improvements. Now, the voice diaphragm on the mask on the left is actually just a plastic disc, exactly like the Soviet ones. The Chinese one is actually a rubber drum skin kind of design. Um, I'll get to that later when I show you the FMJ05, because I'll show you their kind of finalised design for it, as far as I'm aware. But yeah, the M69 was a good mask. Now, between these two masks, chronologically, there was the M65, which is one of the worst gas masks ever designed, as far as I can tell. Now, don't confuse it with the Draeger M65, which is actually a good design. The Chinese M65 was a cheek filter mask, but only had one cheek filter. So... Um, um, it's very similar facially to the uh, M69, so imagine the M69, but rather than taking a 40mm filter on the side, it had a really bulky cheek filter. Um, and supposedly, you weren't issued spare cheek filters for it, so you got the mask, the filter was already in it by the time you got it, and you had to hope the filter lasted you. I don't know if you could even replace them if you had a spare filter, because apparently they might have been sewn in, or the pouch might have been like factory sealed. Um, but regardless, it was basically a cheek filter mask with a giant cheek filter on one side, so not very good for weight balance in the mask. Um, and yeah, 
by the time you got the mask with the filter in it, it might have already expired, making the mask useless, especially if you didn't have a spare to replace it. So the M69 is obviously a far more competent design. However, one of the issues is lots of Chinese filters are very small, um, which means there's not much uh, volume inside the filter for filling with activated charcoal, as you can see on both of those masks, um, which means the filters are kind of next to useless anyway because even if they did work to begin with, uh, they don't have much adsorption capacity before they get overwhelmed by gas. Now a very familiar sight, this is the Chinese TF1, which is basically a GP5 SHM41 ripoff, however you want to look at it. Um, very, very similar. It uses plastic parts and things rather than um, glass and metal, so it's obviously got a price reduced there. There's a bit of metal on it, but not as much as like a GP5 or SHM41. Technically, it's closer to the SHM41 because it has the bigger um, sort of intake bit for the hose, unlike a GP5 where it's cut down a bit. Um, perfectly functional mask. You can't really go wrong designing a mask like a GP5 or an SHM41 because it's literally a latex hood with um, you know an intake and an outtake valve. Really, very simple. Uh, what I did have a bit of an issue with, and I had this with my um, M64 as well. Is some of the valves can be a bit sticky, I guess, where they've glued them in. So sometimes you actually have to stick your finger in there or a pen or something and actually kind of force the glue off before the masks function properly. Because otherwise the valves don't open and close because, you know, somebody's just thrown a load of glue into the mask to try and stick things together. Now, I don't know if the Chinese military have ever used this mask. I know they have definitely used an SHM style mask at one point. If you watch Trinity and Beyond, in the end of the segment, China gets the bomb. Um, Chinese soldiers, lots of them have SHM style masks on, but what is interesting with those is they actually have a really long neck piece, they seem to tuck into their um, like jackets, so I don't actually know what that particular mask is, but it's quite interesting, but regardless, I think the TF1 was literally designed for industrial and civilian use. Um, it comes issued with the filter like the one on the left there, that little tiny plastic crap filter that's technically refillable but that wouldn't do you much good when the filter's not big enough to filter anything in the first place. Um, but yeah, there's lots of pictures of the TF1 being used for coffee can type filters and everything in between. Um, I'm sure the mask itself, as I said, is pretty well designed. I've also got my Chinese hose on there. Now the hose is quite interesting, I've recommended these before. If you're going to buy um, an old 40mm hose, probably best you get the Chinese ones. I think they work out actually cheaper than buying an old surplus GP5 hose or whatever else. But they're, they're actually got a proper fabric material protecting the rubber. They're newer so they're less likely to have holes in them, you know, so they're more likely to work. And they seem to have normalised screw threads at each end, which means that you can technically, although I don't think it works 100% of the time, get them to screw into a Soviet mask and then put a NATO filter on the bottom and it should make an airtight seal. Um, but Again, I don't think you've got a 100% guarantee of that working, um, you know, down to sort of production quality on lots of the masks and the hoses themselves. But it's quite an interesting thing that you can actually get a hose that's um, modern and, you know, sort of works as a converter between uh, Ghost and NATO. Okay, now for the FMJ05. So this has a couple of different names. I think this one's called something like the MF11. Um, but I think they gave it a different name if it was military or civilian use. One version has a drinking tube on, the other doesn't. Um, but that's about the only difference. Now, this reminds me a lot of the British light anti-gas respirators. Um, basically because if you know how the Lag Mark II works, or the Canadian C3, it's got that same kind of exhale valve voice diaphragm system where the voice diaphragm is in the middle and the exhale valve goes around the outside. So... This is a very competent mask, but very compact. Annoyingly, mine's in a size where it's not comfortable for me to wear it, but I will demonstrate it quickly in a minute for you. Um, there's not much to say about it, really. Six-point head harness with elasticated strap, so that works fine. Uh, combined exhale valve and voice diaphragm, good field of view. Uh, only a Tissot tube on one side, but it's got a reflector system, so it doesn't fog up very much. It's going to be uncomfortable, but what I'm going to do now is put it on for you and demonstrate that. Um, sort of exhale valve voice diaphragm system. Okay, so to show you the exhale valve system, you've basically got a screw thread here. So you take off the cover, and then what you've got is your combined voice diaphragm and exhale valve. So this bit here, the green bit, that is the um, voice diaphragm, because it's like a rubber drum skin. Um, you can see my finger behind it there. You can see it's quite thin, but it's made well enough. Then you've got your exhale valve system here, which is obviously this bit of rubber that flaps open. 
because uh, that's designed so um, obviously the air can come out. So if I just put it back into the mask, it's probably not going to sit in there very well without me screwing this back on. So um, I'll just quickly show you what the mask looks like on. I've shown this before in other videos. As I said, it's not the most comfortable mask for me because this, I think, is the smallest size they did it in. Yeah, it's a size 1, and obviously I'd probably be more suited with a size 2 or 3. But I'll just get it on and show you anyway because it is a good design mask. So I'll just tighten the straps a bit. If I only tighten it to this amount, it's not too uncomfortable. It's just a bit tight on my nose, so I think a size 2 would probably fit me fine. Now, let's see if I can actually demonstrate this in action without it falling out. It's fallen out because I can smell things again. So let's just stick that back in there. So what I'll do is I'll first hold down my finger on the voice diaphragm. And as you can see when I exhale, that opens up there. Now if I do that like that, you should see that the drum skin kind of vibrates slightly. I can certainly feel that with my finger. And what that um, obviously does is it's your voice diaphragm. So let's uh, get this reassembled back together. If I'm screwing it the right way, I can't really tell. Yeah, there we go. Oh, no, there we go. But anyway, this is the FMJ05. It's actually a competent mask, but as said, uh, this one's a little too small for me. But it is a good design. That looks weird, doesn't it, having that off the, like that? But um, yeah, FMJ05 is actually a very good design, in my opinion. It's, but as I said, it's kind of like a British light anti-gas respirator, just a bit more modernised, really. Now, the FMJ05, I believe, is being replaced in service with the FMJ08, which is actually an S10 ripoff. However, it still uses that same XL valve voice diaphragm system, so I don't know if there's really much improvement between it and the FMJ05. However, I guess you've get, got the better S10 style lenses. Again, an FMJ08 I would certainly buy because I like the S10, um, but I've never seen them really under eighty pounds. You know, they've been very expensive whenever I've seen them, so I've never had an interest in getting them. But I would say if you are looking for a cheap prepping mask or any like actual useful or uh, real gas mask. If you get an FMJ05 that actually fits you properly, um, you can get them pretty much brand new from China because they export them. Um, and yeah, the FMJ05 is actually a really good mask. Um, you know, I can't really find many faults of it, especially if it's in my size. It's simple, but it works very effectively, which is basically what you always want in a gas mask. Now, speaking of other modern Chinese masks that are exported, here's a kind of 3M ripoff. Um, this one it's fallen over there, but you can see on the picture on the left what it's meant to look like. Um, I've got real 3M filters on there because I wouldn't really trust the Chinese filters to work properly and Chinese filters often seem to fall apart when I get them. Um, but the mask itself is competent, it's literally just a copy of the 3M, I think it might be 6000 series, which is the standard 3M half face mask. If you can get this significantly cheaper than the 3M mask it's worth doing, if you can't then you might as well get the real 3M mask, but often these are about £5 with a pack of filters, but the filters are probably useless. But if you're not using it for anything really serious, just using it for like sanding or something like that, one of these with the 3M filters on works perfectly functional. Um, I've used this because I wasn't sure if it was making an airtight seal with me or not, so I did use it when I was actually doing some sanding, and um, you know, I didn't, it didn't set my asthma off, I didn't cough or sneeze at all. Um, when I took the mask off and checked the inside after sanding, um, you know, the inside of the mask had absolutely no sand residue, or like wood chip residue kind of left in it at all. So, um, yeah. It definitely works, um, and they're worth getting, you know, for the cheap price, if you can't get a 3M mask cheaply. However, one that's not worth getting is this. Now, this looks great, doesn't it? Um, the Puder, whatever it's called, sort of uh, industrial respirator. Bright yellow, um, got a nice big panoramic lens. It's got kind of a voice diaphragm XL valve system at the bottom with a 40mm filter intake. You look at that and think, that's going to be great. However, what lets this mask down a lot is the strap system is really stupid. Um, I've gone over this before in other videos, so you can watch those, but basically the straps were designed by an idiot. Um, the mask is mostly a rip-off of one of the Draeger Explore series, however when they ripped that mask off they didn't actually copy the, copy the Draeger straps. So what you have is straps with really bad buckles where you can try and tighten the strap and then the straps ping off and you have to reattach them over and over again. Um, I've kind of rigged it up now so the top strap doesn't actually go through the way it's meant to, but that holds the top strap in. The side straps have a risk of pinging off, but they're nowhere near as bad. 
Another issue with the mask is because it's made from a soft sort of silicone material, um, when you've got the mask on with the weight of a filter, sometimes that can cause the mask to bend away from your face in a stupid angle. So um, that's another design flaw of it. So I would not recommend this mask at all. It does look cool, don't get me wrong, but um, <clears throat> you know it's not a good design. It didn't really have a quality testing thing, I assume, where people actually tried them on and saw if they worked properly, you know, in actual workplace settings. Um, I guess it, it looks good, so therefore, you know, it should sell. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't recommend that mask. Most of the other masks I would recommend, um, if we just zoom out and look at all of them, again. So, yep, the Chinese M64, a bit more bulky than the Soviet MM1, but it works. Uh, the M69, a very competent design, I like it. The TF1, um, it, again, it's just like a modern SHM style GP5 mask. Not a lot to write home about, but it works really, I guess. Other than, like I said, some of the vowels sometimes need you to unstick them. Um, the FMJ05, I would definitely recommend that. That is a very competent mask design. Like I said, nice and simple, but works, which is exactly what you want in a gas mask. Not much to go wrong, but it does the basics very well. Uh, the 3M style masks, yeah, works well enough. Um, however, because often Chinese masks sometimes can be cheap on export prices. If you had a mask like that, the FMJ05 left of it, um, you know, for not much more than the half face mask, I would just go for the FMJ05 personally. Um, but yeah, they're both competent, but the pewter I would not recommend for the reason that the straps ping off and it's just a stupid incompetent design. But there you go, this is my six Chinese gas masks that make up my Chinese gas mask collection. Um, I will say these are all... Um, what do they call it? Uh, People's Republic of China or Democratic Republic of China, whatever it's called. Um, uh, like mainland China. These aren't Taiwanese masks or anything like that. These aren't, you know, from Taiwan. Um, Nationalist China or Republic of China, whatever it's called. Oh, it's probably Democratic People's Republic of China, is it? I, I can never remember. Um, but basically, it's not mainstream. Uh, these are all mainstream communist Chinese masks, not um, the Taiwanese masks, just to clear that up in case anybody was wondering about that. Um, so these are all mainland Chinese masks, but there you go. Um, most of the designs are pretty good, uh, the pewter being obviously the worst, despite it looking the most flash and fancy. Um, but yeah, you could do a lot worse than getting Chinese masks, and over time they do seem to be improving them a bit. And as I said, the FMJ05 at the top left, that is definitely um, a great mask if you could get one in your size.